Hey, this is Jay with Sacred Gaming bringing you some Black Ops 3 action. I'm not going to be talking about this gameplay at all. Instead, I've got a faith topic that I want to talk to you guys. Now, I've kind of gotten away from these life and faith videos here recently, and that's because we started the Sacred Podcast. And in the Sacred Podcast that we do on every Sunday, I want to invite you guys all out to that. But in that podcast, we always talk about gaming at first, and then we finish off the show talking about a faith issue. So I've kind of gone to that. But Sometimes there's topics that I want to kind of talk about just one on one with you guys. So that's what I'm doing here. And in this video, I want to talk to you guys about how Christians respond to people. And I hope if you're a non Christian, you kind of stay tuned because I really need your input on this. I want to know if you guys know what I'm talking about. And you Christians, I want to know if you guys can relate to what I'm saying, if you've ever experienced what I'm saying. So back about 15 years ago, all right, I had one of those times where I did something and everybody found out about it. And I saw the church, all right, because that's who responded. I saw people in the church or Christians in the church respond basically in two different ways. And one way was a, a good way that kind of built me up. And the other way was a negative way. And it kind of really tore me down. And unfortunately, I think that the majority of Christians respond in this way. So I want to kind of give you some advice on how to respond properly, how to respond biblically, and, and not make the mistakes that I've made or that other people have made. And I'm sure if you are a Christian, you know what I'm talking about, where you've been kind of uh, hit by other Christians and they've kind of knocked you down with their response to things about you. Or if you're a non-Christian, I'm sure you're relating to this as well. And I'd love to hear uh, about your thoughts about what I'm saying and everything like that. So I want to share this this square, all right? This square, uh, because it really gives us a good visual on how we tend to respond to people, how the church tends to respond to people. And I also want to talk about how Jesus responded to people. So in this box, all right, these four boxes right here, we basically have four ways that we can respond to somebody. On the one side, all right, you can either respond with the truth or you can respond with a lie. That's pretty obvious. Doesn't take any explaining. You can tell somebody the truth or you can tell somebody a lie, all right? On the other side of that, though, on the other side of the box, there's also we can respond with condemnation where we condemn people or we can respond with mercy. And another word for mercy would be compassion. So I think, you know, our responses are generally, generally made up of a combination of these two sides. All right. So on one hand, uh, you could respond to somebody and tell them a lie and you could do it condemningly. All right. Do it with a lot of condemnation. And I think we all can agree that is not the way to respond to people. All right. But here's how the church responds. Now, I think the church tends to lie and mix that with mercy and compassion or the church tends to tell the truth, but they mix that with condemnation. All right. If you think about the Westboro Baptist Church, right, sometimes some of the things they say are right and, and it's very few. I think a lot of times they're in the lies and the condemnation part. But once in a while, I think they have some truth on their side, but they say it in a condemning way. They're kind of holding up these signs that just really hurt people and everything like that. And that's not the way that we respond. Now, on the other side of that, um, sometimes we as Christians, we, we care about people so much and we love people so much. We want to tell them what they want to hear. And so we tell them a lie. Hey, it's okay. I remember I was in the church and somebody, I heard, overheard somebody giving somebody advice that this thing was okay. And I'm like, no, this is not okay. This is not what the Bible says. You know, and sometimes those lies come out of just ignorance and not understanding and just not growing enough and, and realizing some things. But sometimes, you know, we just don't want to hurt people's feelings. So we go along with things and tell people that, hey, this is okay to do. Now, the place where Jesus lived, right? He lived in an area where mercy or compassion met truth. And I don't know if you guys remember the story of when um, Jesus encountered the woman that was caught in adultery. All right, here this woman, she did something wrong. She did something that she was not supposed to do. But what Jesus doesn't do is he doesn't condemn her. He even said, hey, I don't condemn you. All right, but then he says, hey, go and sin no more. So he has the truth right there mixed with mercy and i think that's where we need to respond to people and that's the area that we need to respond to people we need to love them enough to tell them the truth hey what you're doing you shouldn't be doing but we can't do it with condemnation we can't do it holding up the sign saying god hates you or something like that you know that's where the pharisees lived they were very much on you know here's god's rules and everything like that and i think a lot of people that's how they picture god today like he's just hang, standing up there and he's just waiting for you to mess up and he's going to point it out and shove it in your face and you know tell you off or punish you 
because of that. But that's not God. That's not why he gives us these laws. He gives us these laws uh, because they help us live together. Hey, don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't murder somebody. You know, don't do these things. They're not meant to just punish us and, you know, kind of condemn us or anything like that. They're meant to help us to live the right way. So uh, when you mix that, though, with compassion and mercy, it's a lot easier to take from somebody. You know, have you ever had somebody respond to you and they, you know, instead of pointing their finger at you, they come and put your arm around you and be like, um, hey, you know, I know you're doing this. It's it's not good for you, though. There's there's a better way that that needs to be our response. We need to come alongside people and just put our arms around them and love them and love them enough to tell them the truth and not lie to them like we're doing today. So, you know, I think the church, the typical church response, you guys let me know if you know what I'm talking about. It's either, you know, we mix that mercy and compassion and we tell somebody a lie. Hey, it's okay to do this. You know, God understands, you know, it's okay for you to, you know, lie on your taxes because the government doesn't, you know, I don't know if that's a sin, but you know what I'm talking about. You know, we kind of lie about things, either that or we're holding the signs. And I think this is kind of the response. You know, Christians love to condemn other Christians, man. You hear another credit you hear another christian swear or something like that and you're all over them you know you shouldn't be talking that way blah 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 there's no grace there's no compassion there's no mercy in our speech when we're talking to other christians and there's no mercy or compassion when we're talking to non-christians man it's like they're over there we're over here we can't stand the non-christians you know they're just scumbags and everything like that but man where is our mercy i want to leave you with two verses right and these are both by Christ. And, and like I said, this is where he lived, right? And this one, first one's about Jesus Christ. It's John 1.14. It said, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among, it, among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. That's what he was, full of grace and truth. And that's what we need to be, full of grace, full of mercy, full of compassion, but telling people the truth. And then John 3, 16, 3, 17, everybody knows John 3, 16, for God's love of the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But John 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God sent his son to save the world not condemn it why are we as his followers spending so much time condemning people you know i'm not saying we don't tell them the truth but don't condemn people remember that we were once like that you know remember that we're we're not perfect we've got our own issues why can't we realize that instead of pretending that we've got it all together and we're just going to point the finger at somebody else and point out all their flaws why don't we come alongside them and help build them up and help raise them up i don't know that's what i'm thinking let me know if you guys know what i'm talking about if you like these videos i would really appreciate it if you give them a thumbs up that just helps share them and everything like that let me know if you want to hear more of these and come check out the sacred podcast every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You just come to YouTube. You'll get a notification in your subscription box that said we just went live. Come in there, interact with us, talk to us, you know, give us some questions. If you got any questions that can't make it, you know, put them in here, tweet them at me, but just connect with us. But that's where I'm going to end it, man. As always, take care and God bless.